I don't know why I used to like haunted houses. Now I'm like, my house is haunted. Hey, that's chicken butt. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Woo! Guys, I'm so freaking excited because today we are going to be eating Mediterranean food. I believe that's what Yelp told me this restaurant is. Here we have an entire rotisserie fried, no, rotisserie, is it just a rotisserie chicken? With a bunch of hot Cheeto puffs underneath it. We've also got a cucumber salad. We've got some baba ganoush. We've got some basamati rice. We've got some pita bread. We've got some freaking pickled radish with horseradish. We've got grilled tomatoes. It's literally a feast down here. So let's just get started. Okay. Is that a, is that supposed to be a chicken wow. nest? Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be like a house of chicken. I just pretty much dunked my chicken like into baba ganoush, which is definitely not how you eat it. And I'm gonna get some rice. I just love baba ganoush. I love it more than hummus. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. It also mm. have like a sauce in here. Not bad. Not dry at all. Mm mmm. Mm. Okay. Wow. I took a fat bite, but it's good. I also have some grilled tomatoes. I feel like everything is better with grilled tomatoes. Would you like a grilled tomato? Mm, sure. <laughs> Each grilled tomato was like a dollar or something. Are they not that price? Whoa. Wow. That's amazing. That's real good. Okay, it was worth the money. I was so confused. Is it really that expensive? Because I know tomatoes are like a cheap fruit, vegetable, whatever you want to categorize it at. But it's so good. Did you know there are people went on court for, is it fruit or tomato? <gasps> I mean, is it fruit or vegetable mm -hmm. about tomato? What did they say? What happened? Did the judge say it's a vegetable or a fruit? Or did the judge say tomato, tomato? <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? You just eat Dip the in. Cheetos with the, Baba well, that's ganoush. all just. <laughs> Baba <Babaga> what? <laughs> Isn't Baba Ganoush? <laughs> hey, that's chicken butt. You don't know that? <laughs> that's their little tail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like chicken butt. I'm shook. So while we feast on this, it is officially the second Spooktober story, okay? And this one has been highly requested for months and months and months, and I just never touched upon it because it is traumatizing. I Googled it, I brief, briefly, briefly understood what it was about, and I got really creeped out, and I didn't want to go into it. But then I decided last night in the middle of the night, which honestly caused a bunch of nightmares to happen, I read about the infamous urban legend last night, of the bunny man. Now, the bunny man typically resides in the great city, state of Virginia. <laughs> Have you heard of the bunny man before? Yeah. Growing up, yeah? Mm mm. No. Every state is known for like their own urban legend. Ah. Mm hmm. So, what is Atlanta known for? Them peaches. <laughs> Them big booty peaches. <laughs> Maybe I'll do like a 50 day series of every state's urban legends. Imagine that. Let me know in the comments if you guys are interested. Some people love the urban legends and some people are like, this is too scary. I don't know. I like how it's really good. I didn't know they had puffs of the hot Cheetos until recently. Maybe it's new? If you guys don't know, Virginia is one of the oldest states in the country, so there's going to be a lot of culture, a lot of history, a lot of love, but also a lot of urban legends coming from a state that is so rich in culture, right? Virginia is actually known for one of the most haunted places on the East Coast, which is actually an asylum. So they had an asylum in the 1900s, I believe prior to it becoming an asylum. This is not about the bunny man. I'm just setting up the scene of like the urban legend scene in Virginia. They have an insane asylum where they did so many crazy things but it all started as a church for boys well as well it was run by church leaders but it was a school for boys and it was known to be one of the most competitive schools in the area and the teachers actually encouraged the boys to bully each other because they thought it would enable them to work harder just diss each other mm-hmm what the f are you wearing johnny mm-hmm 
You look like a... Honestly, you're so good, honey. And then that school turned into us out. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Just like that. Too much bullying. Too, that's what happens when you bully people too much. Is that what happens, really? No, but it could. So don't bully people, bits. Allegedly, rumor has it, urban legend, is that a lot of boys in that school ended up taking their own lives from the heavy amounts of bullying. It was shut down for about five years until a man, a doctor, bought it out mm -hmm. and he decided to turn it into an insane asylum, is I believe what they call it. Okay. <clears throat> Can you have another tomato? It's good, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I love the most? Baba the goodness. rice. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What the heck? I'm literally just eating spoonfuls of the rice. It's like perfectly seasoned. Wow. Why is the rice so good? It's so confusing. At the time, it was known to be a very advanced place. They did a lot of crazy, creepy things that you probably don't think is advanced asylum techniques at this moment in time because we are more woke and advanced now. But this happened in the early 1900s, not even 1990s, not like a 90s baby, but I'm talking 1916. They were doing things like electroconductivity therapy, which means you electrocute someone to induce seizures, oh which I didn't know this. I realized this after fact. It's actually legal in the US right now to be electrocuted as therapy. And some people swear by it, such as late actress Carrie Fisher. There's a huge, 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 huge scandal in China about yeah. that right now. We saw a lot of videos on it, but apparently in the US, the difference between China is that, um, because we were reading a lot of articles about kids being sent to these, like, I wouldn't call it an asylum, but kind of like an asylum, and they would mm -hmm. get electrotherapy, but they would say it's the biggest pain ever, and there's just, just so just much scandal and drama. Up torture, yeah. Yeah, but in the US, it's completely illegal to do this therapy unless they're under anesthesia and given a muscle relaxant. Mm -hmm. So they wake up feeling like, oh shit, just something happened. But it's supposed to be for people who experience severe depression um, and also schizophrenia and catatonia, which means you're in like a catatonic state. And it actually works? Some people swear by it, some people hate it, some people experience memory loss. There's definitely a lot of side effects. It's definitely one of those things where, you know, you tried all these other ways and nothing worked. So maybe let's try this. It's not something where you go to a doctor and they're like, you're having a headache? Shock um, you know, it's not like that, okay? So it's like usually after you've tried every single thing for years and you're like, I can't do this anymore, like nothing's working, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the US, you have to be under general anesthesia, I believe, and you have to have a muscle relaxant. And apparently, mm -hmm. once you induce this seizure, it's supposed to tr like change some brain chemical and you go undergo it two to three times a week for two to five weeks, which is insane. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So this started back in the day where they didn't really put you under anesthesia and they didn't really give you a choice. They also did something called hydroshock therapy in this institution, which I don't know if it started here, but that's what a lot of articles that I read said. But essentially it's the therapy of crazy temperatures on the human body. And so what they would do is they would get these patients who are dealing with, I don't know, maybe they're depressed, maybe they have anxiety, right? These issues that can be addressed in other ways. But back in the day, what they would do is they would wrap someone in freezing cold towels for like five days straight, like a mummy, because the cold was supposed to shock them and wake them up so from their depression. Do people do that when they go into that little machine, that freezing <laughs> machine? Tyrotherapy or something. Mm -hmm. Or they would put you in like this giant steaming tub of water and strap you in for five days. Imagine getting Steam steaming. Hot water for five days? Yeah, imagine getting like steamed like a shell and bow for five days straight. Yeah, there was a lot of 
torture in this insane asylum. A lot of lobotomies. There was a lot of insulin induced comas where they would practically put you in a coma on purpose and wake you up because they thought it was gonna solve your schizophrenia. It was a shit show, okay? And so this lasted up until the 1990s. So this was about a hundred years of this asylum being open. Obviously over time it had new regulations as you know the government changed its laws on what you can and shouldn't do to people etc etc. But there's just a dark history. There's so much there were so many deaths just coming from the therapies themselves you know mm -hmm. but on top of that there was an insane amount of people taking their lives in this institution a lot of people said that out of the paranormal readings mm -hmm. ton of tv shows have done Ton of like paranormal investigators have done. This location has one of the highest readings that are just off the charts, out the walls, right? Mm -hmm. So right now it's empty? Mm -hmm. Vacant? Yeah, and then a former patient bought it out in the 90s, and then I think they sold it to someone, and every Halloween they have a haunted house there. To do a little thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that always makes something less scary though. Is yeah. that just me? Leave it in the comments. Like once you buy it out and you like start selling tickets to that place, I feel like it's less haunted. I don't know why I used to like haunted houses when I was in high school. Now I'm like, my house is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> like why? Did a lot of people go there for Halloween. Bunny Man is one of Virginia's oldest, oldest urban legends. Some people say it starts back in the 1900s, like 1904 to be exact, but it all started in the 1970s when a lot of people started reporting incidents with a man that was dressed in a bunny costume. So it starts with this one couple and they were driving and they had parked at this little bridge, which is now called the Bunny's Bridge. And allegedly, if you go there during Halloween, the body man will come and he'll skin you, kill you, and hang you from the bridge. On Halloween. On Halloween. This all started in October of the 70s, right? A couple was driving around and they decided to park their car near this overturn, overturned past bridge area. And they had parked when all of a sudden they saw a man in a bunny costume. Now, here's where urban legends get a little bit murky, right? Some people say that he was dressed in, um, other outfits that resembled very very dark racist parts of america oh. yes but then eventually somehow the description evolved into a man wearing a bunny costume all we know is originally that in the beginning the man that was in the car the driver of the car he had said that the man was wearing a light colored costume with something on his head so we don't know if, just to like kind of clear the race part up i believe he was not a minority mm -hmm. i believe he was not so that might kind of clear things up because i know some people would be like oh but then then he probably saw that you know you get it right mm -hmm. and so he's sitting in the car with his fiance when all of a sudden this man in this costume comes out angrily yelling at them saying get off my property i'm gonna call the police i have your license number etc 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 yeah and so originally like the couple they think that this is alarming if that happened to us we'd be like okay we're sorry we're leaving your property right and then drive away mm -hmm. but what proceeded next is something that shocked them to the core all of a sudden they felt glass shatter all over them mm -hmm. and as they drove away because they're like is he shooting the car what's going on on, right mm -hmm. the fiance the girl who's in the passenger seat she looks down at the car floor and sees a hatchet and she's like what the hell mm -hmm. and so they drive straight to the police station and they write a police report saying i think he was in a costume i don't know what's been going on here's the hatchet now here's the crazy thing the police returned the hatchet to him which he now framed in his house because he was actually part of like the u.s navy not the navy something Wait, air house? command huh they returned to who the bunny man no no oh the man who was driving mm -hmm. the car mm -hmm. the police like hey keep this for what reasons? Usually they take it as evidence, right? Mm -hmm. But he was part of the Air Force or something. So he's in the military. So they said, go report it to your military police. I don't know. There's some <laughs> weird ass <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
Okay, so he frames it in the house. <laughs> and then, 10 days later, this was much closer to Halloween at this point, the same mm -hmm. year in 1970, there was a construction company that resided near the area and they were building a building or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. When all of a sudden, the security guard, his name is Paul, he was just making sure nobody comes into the construction zones, which I didn't know this. When you're building like a massive structure, you have to have security guards posted because a lot of people will come in and loot your metals, yeah. like coppers, your wiring, which is nuts. So one of the security guards is making his rounds making sure nothing is suspicious happening in the area when he sees a nearby house and he sees a man with an axe hacking at the roof of this semi-vacant house mm -hmm. and he's just going at the roof imagine seeing a man in the middle of the night going at somebody's roof like that's just you know that's not the homeowner i don't know any homeowner who would be like this is my house but at three in the mornings i like to go and ruin it like it just doesn't make sense right mm -hmm. and so he approaches the man and goes hey hey i'm gonna call the cops what are you doing right mm -hmm. man turns around full bunny suit and he says y'all are trespassing on my property unless you get out i will chop your head off that wasn't even his property though and so the security guy goes he's like, he's like this house is trespassing my property <laughs> yeah 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 i guess his property is just like anything near him <laughs> he walks away and he calls the police uh -huh. now when he gives his police statement he is very sure to include the words bunny costume bunny this bunny that right and the police take his report and a lot of news reporters latch onto it and they say bunny man that's so weird a bunny man uh -huh. that's creepy and so they start writing articles breaking news bunny man ruins roof etc etc uh -huh. bunnies on the roof what do we do snakes on a plane bunnies on a roof okay and so everybody starts freaking out and so then i don't know if it was the halloween spirit of the 1970s but a lot of people called in reporting sightings of a bunny man over 50 different counts of people claim that they saw a bunny man here's where it gets interesting right the police can't find anyone that everybody claims to be the bunny man who hates trespassers. They don't have any leads, they have no suspects to be honest, and so everybody is just left guessing who the hell is the bunny man and why a bunny, right? Yeah. So urban legend has it, and there's so many different variations of this urban legend, so leave it in the comments if you are from Virginia, especially in this particular area, let me know what is the one that locals believe, right? Because there's so many articles, Wikipedia says something different from this place, you know, this article, CNN, I think even Huffington Post wrote about it, mm -hmm. and so they said that it all started when there was a bus. A bus transporting asylum people to a different asylum. Mm -hmm. And so they're driving, driving, when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the bus crashed on this Bunny Man Bridge, or the future Bunny Man Bridge. Mm -hmm. And it was shown that a lot of the other people, okay, this is where the variation split up. Some people say that all the other like people that escaped, all the asylum people, the patients, mm -hmm. a lot of them were caught except for two. Some people say all of them died except for two. So mm -hmm. whether they were caught or dead, I'm not entirely sure right mm -hmm. but the story goes there was two that weren't caught by the police mm -hmm. and one of them his name was douglas right and mm -hmm. i believe he had escaped the bus the escaped the entire car accident with another patient by the name of lawrence and one day the police went into the woods near the bunny man bridge where the original crash happened trying to find if they could see where had douglas gone because this is a liability he can't just be out running amok mm -hmm. and they find a man who had been murdered and hung up in the woods, and it was none other than fellow patient Lawrence. And they see on his toe that there was a note tied up, almost as if his body were to be in a morgue. Because did you know in a morgue, they tie up all your credentials on your big toe, on a string, with your name and everything. Why do they tie it up? Because I believe most of the drawers, oh. your feet come out first. Oh. And it has to be tied to your body. Okay. Yeah. My big toe? Yeah, I believe so. Damn. <laughs> You're like, damn, but it's real big. <laughs> they gonna need a lot of string. It's a little crusty. <laughs> <laughs> and so they tied up a note on the big toe saying, you'll never catch me. And it was signed off by the bunny man. Mm -hmm. And then the police were like, okay, well now we gotta catch him. It's obviously Douglas. Let's go look for him. Let's go look for him. And as they start to look, they also keep getting calls from locals. And the locals start saying, hey, we are finding a lot of bunnies that are hung up and dead. 
what's going on? You know, this is not the work of a coyote. Some of them are hanging off the bunny man bridge. What's going on? Why are there dead bunnies everywhere? And the way that they're mutilated is very, very scary and dark. It's not just, oh, I needed to eat a bunny because I'm hungry. And so it seemed that he was eating their flesh. Oh. Because he needed to escape the police and he can't just walk into your nearby Ralph's or I think Virginia has Kroger. I'm not sure. And so afterwards, it's almost like when the police looked at it, allegedly, he was taking joy out of killing them, the process of it. And so the police are even more alarmed and they say, okay, now we really have to catch the bunny man. We really have to catch the bunny man. And what they didn't tell news outlets in the press immediately is the fact that the bunny man might have an inclination to like bunnies because he was in the asylum. What did, what did he do, right? He was in the asylum for murdering his entire family on Easter. Everybody knows the Easter bunny. And so you see a lot of cases where there's just more and more bunnies stacking up. And now legend has it, this goes two ways. Either A, he was never caught, or B, some people say the police were right on to him, right? Mm -hmm. And they actually found him. They had a high-speed chase that led straight to the crime scene of the original crash where there was a massive train coming at them 60 to 70 miles an hour. And the police were trying to catch the bunny man, but instead he jumped in front of the train and they saw his body get hit. But what they found to be peculiar was that- There's no body. They never found the body. Mm -hmm. And police swear that after he, they saw the impact, mm -hmm. they heard the most devilish laugh. God damn. Radiating through the woods. And so that is the urban legend of the bunny man. But it gets creepier because people say, oh, the, the guy that had the hatchet thrown at him, he didn't even have it bad. Prior to him, there was two more instances where the bunny man bridge was so creepy. The first being that there was a son who had taken his family out to the bridge and they were driving through. They're driving to a different part of Virginia and they were driving through the bridge when the son decided, wait, mom and dad, why don't we stop here under this bridge for a second? And he murdered his parents before murdering himself. And so that was the first alleged case of the bunny man having, maybe it was the bunny man that killed all three and made it seem like it was, you know, something else. Or maybe the presence of the bunny man caused him to do it. Second incident that allegedly happened was there was three young boys who went to the bunny man bridge. And I think at this point people knew about the bunny man. So they were like, bunny man, bunny man, bunny man, because urban legend has it. If you go on Halloween and you turn off your car lights at night and turn them back on the bunny man will be standing in front of your car mm. or if you go into the bridge and you say bunny man bunny man bunny man the bunny man will appear so at this point those three boys they were found the next morning hanging from the bridge all murdered by the bunny man Mango, I need you to stop snoring <laughs> this is a very climactic part in my story bit <laughs> so is there more recent encounters with Bunny Man or that was just a long no, time ago? No, that was just a long time ago in like the late 1900s, like 1970s, mm. 1980s, and now it's just become a very peculiar place. And there's actually a lot of conspiracies around it because apparently the Bunny Man loves to come out during Halloween, of course, because he loves wearing his bunny costume and allegedly he wears it all year round to murder people, but on Halloween you can get away with it. Which by the way, that's going to be a whole ass episode of people getting away with crimes on Halloween because everybody's dressed up. No one can identify you. Who thought this was a good idea? This is as close as Mirka is going to get to the movie The Purge because it's just, how do you even know? Like, it's just so creepy, okay? I don't even think I'll be participating in trick-or-treaters bits. I will put out some candy in the very, very front. You can do that. You can leave candies out front. Yeah, so you want to leave candy so your house doesn't get egged by teenagers? Hmm. Do people still egg houses? Yeah, yeah. I thought you wanted to give out nuclear noodle. <laughs> Don't expose me like that! Yeah, I wanted to give out nuclear noodles and see how kids would react, but I feel like my neighbors are a little bit strict here and I feel like I would get arrested. She tried to murder our children. They are handing out one chip. <laughs> one chip challenge, huh? Let me know in the comments if you guys have heard of this urban legend. Would you be scared if you saw a bunny man costume for Halloween? I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments what other urban legends you guys want me to cover and... I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.